Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here as we get ourselves ready for All-Star Race Qualifying. 31 drivers have qualified their way into this season's All-Star Race. Another additional four we will see transfer in in the Hershey Shootout event, which will take place tomorrow. But it's time to find out who's going to be starting on the pole position, the front row, and all the way back through the field in spots 1 through 31 for this season's All-Star Race. I'm being joined by two co-commentators, a guy who knows very much about Charlotte. He actually won the Coke 600 at this track one year ago, Michael Norman. Michael, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. Well, I guess in a way, I mean, I am sick, but, you know, this doesn't keep me away from the racetrack. Absolutely not. You're, you're an inspiration to us all. And another guy who is going to be maybe seeing what Charlotte brings to the table since he's not locked into the All-Star race yet, but the defending champion of the, of the Hershey's Cup Series, Kyle Matthews. Kyle, I mean, what are you going to be able to you think, gather for information here to be able to apply in your uh, heat race for the Hershey shootout tomorrow? Who is this well, Kyle this is Matthews give guy? Me, well, this is going to be a nice, uh, I guess a little bit of an advantage just to see what people are doing, see what line to take around and just take around this track and just to, you know, see how these cars are handling. So it's going to be a good, good advantage for me. I'm really surprised. You know, I'm really surprised we're, we're not locked in already, but it just goes to show you how competitive this uh, series is. Absolutely. I mean, uh, like I made the point back at Richmond, the fact that the, your two wins last season came during or came before last year's All-Star Race. They locked you into last year's All-Star Race, but not having a win since then uh, doesn't lock you into this All-Star Race. And unfortunately, this isn't like uh, the uh, Sprint Unlimited where you get locked or the Clash, whatever you want to call it. I don't care um, where you get locked they in. They change via, the name every year, it seems they, like. They so. do. They do. You never know what it's going to be. Um, but it doesn't lock you into the all-star race. So, um, yeah, best of luck to you tomorrow, and hopefully you can find something out here. Uh, two of your teammates are going to be out here qualifying in this one, so maybe you can get some information from them after this one's over. We're still waiting for the first car to go out on track here. These drivers, how it's going to work for qualifying, they're going to be allowed on track for two laps, and at the completion of that second lap is where they're going to basically be starting. So what do you guys think? Are, are we going to be seeing uh, a No pitch stop? No, no pit stop in this one. Just two oh, laps and you're done. Oh, that takes the excitement out of qualifying. I know. Well, we had, I think we had pit stop one one time, and uh, it was it was kind of difficult to. Uh... I remember having, I, I remember having uh, back in the day, uh, for I think it was the Bud Shootout at the time, the qualifying for the shootout, which would include the one pit stop. Are you talking about in actual NASCAR or on this channel? Talk about on this channel. Yeah, I, I was there co-commentating that. I, th I think it was, uh, I think it was the tenth and final season of the Snickers Cup series, and we got our first car out on track. It's gonna be James McLeod in the fifty-one. McLeod, former winner this season at Texas. That's what gets him into the All Star race. One of two Twinix racing entries that are locked into the All Star event, and probably a lot of pressure on McLeod being the first one out there. Yeah, that's never a good feeling to really be the first, to be the first one out on a track. You never really know because you, you really don't know what laps you know what would be good or would be good for the pole. So you're really just you know throwing the time up there for everybody to beat. Well, McLeod ended up getting a charter at the beginning of this season when there was the the battle between uh, James Qualls Motorsports and Phoenix Racing to get that final vacant charter. And James McLeod winning out. And, I mean, what a difference it makes when you have a charter. It kind of changes the way that you race. I mean, James McLeod's had a stellar season so far. Already a trip to victory lane. Looking like he might be able to make his first chase for the championship. Yeah, I mean, having a charter, it just gives you so much more confidence. I can say that from experience. If you think back to season one, you know, it's a disaster for Arden. But we were able to get a charter for the next season and, you know, perform so much better so I mean it's just amazing what having a charter can do for, for a race team well McLeod has set the bar 31.130 so now we're going to see what Caitlin Sang can do Caitlin Sang a uh, non-chartered car although there actually is some news developed about that 28 car we'll get to that in just a minute but Caitlin Sang as a non-chartered ride uh, winning the Mud Summer Classic at Eldora dominating that race I mean you guys were there you saw that happen too yeah, very, very impressive run by Caitlin saying that um, in, in that race. And you, know, you, you mentioned a non-chartered ride. We have quite a few uh, 
some teams in this race that are non charter that were able to win last season and in the thirty one and people. part of this season. So uh, yeah, I've got a pretty nice field already. Thirty one people locked into this event. Man, that's that you might as well just have all seventy five thousand. Well, we're going to have a total of 35 drivers in the All-Stars because four drivers are transferring in the Hershey Shootout tomorrow. But that bit of developing news I was going to mention, Caitlin Sang, after this All-Star race, heading to the second half of the regular season, she is going to be a chartered ride. I actually got word from CJ Racing this past week that Joshua Sakuli is going to be swapping his charter over to the 28 team. So if Caitlin Sang can make it into the top 30 in points, she may be in the chase for the championship. So that will be the goal of that team uh, for the second half of the regular season. Right now, she completed her goal, beat James McLeod 30.711 for Caitlin Sang. That was a, that was a great pickup there on that second lap. 7-11. Here's Charles Sanford on track now in the Reese's Pieces Chevrolet. Charles Sanford, winless last season, found victory lane earlier this season, though, at Las Vegas. It's kind of surprising that Charles went winless last season after winning, I believe, three races in season two, but they've they really bounced Talladega back. Talladega back in season two. Now, so far, Caitlin Sang, top of the board, and Caitlin Sang has the fastest first lap, 31.448. So let's see what Sanford's first lap here is. Is it anywhere in that vicinity? 31, almost a 31.5 flat, so that's a little bit slower than Caitlin Sang's first lap. We'll see if Sanford can pick it up this time. And of course, Charles Sanford, uh, like we mentioned, your teammate, I mean, this could be someone that you could go to afterwards, find out what the track conditions are, because it's going to be almost the same kind of track conditions, same time that we're running the uh, Hershey Shootout tomorrow, so track conditions might be the same. Absolutely, and Sanford goes to the uh, goes to a second quickest. I'm sorry, but yeah, I've got two really good teammates in this uh, in this field. I could always go to them for information, which is always nice to have. We should also point out as well that these drivers are going out on track based on where they were in practice. So McLeod was the slowest oh no. in practice, the first it's one out. It's Dallin Poteet. It's Dallin. McLeod was the slowest in practice and then uh, the fastest in the practice session, which if, if I remember correctly, I believe was uh, Tyler Deaver in the 96. He'll be the last one out on track. Makes me wonder though, I mean with the you know, how the weather is going to be. Is it an advantage to go early? Is it an advantage to go late? Or does it really not matter? I mean, I think we're going to find out here pretty soon. It's overcast. I mean, you know, we've got some clouds here, so some drivers may get the benefit of a cloud covering the sun, while other drivers may have the sun just beaten down on this 1.5-mile speedway. So you're right. I'm gonna have it may the, just be timing. I'm going to have, and I'm not related, no, I'm going to have the sun beaten down on me when I leave here in a little bit. That's yeah. right. I can't. I can't stay forever, but because I have a prior commitment to my team, I don't believe that the three is that the three is in this in this field. Correct. Correct. Brooke not, Allen will be taking part in. in the Hershey Shootout tomorrow. Yeah. So I'll oh, be up here. By. I'll be up here with you guys for a little bit, but then I gotta take off and get some. Go down and start giving out some notes and everything, and uh, try and help with the setup to see if we can't maybe get her into this field. Dylan Poteet. Dylan Poteet. Twinix car is pretty close on speed right there. Only four one thousand separating Poteet and teammate McLeod's speeds. Looks like they have very similar setups under the 31 and 50 uh, one. I believe this is what, John Arndt, correct? Yes, it is. I should actually mention, too, I forgot to mention, Dylan Poteet getting into the uh, All-Star race via a win last season at M&M's and two wins this season at Sonoma and Orlando. He's also the points leader. John Arndt. Getting into the all-star race. His first career win coming this season at Kansas. Nice job for John Arndt. One of you know, I was two thinking drivers about out of AS Racing that's I was be in the thinking about race. submitting my name to be in this all-star race, but then I was like, nah, I'll just leave my younger you, driver. You really should have. I mean, you were eligible. You were eligible to be in this all-star race. You should have you should have done a one-off. Eh, I don't need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, some of these other guys could get a chance at victory lane, not me. I think you had a good chance for at John Art. That's the fastest first lap so far. I think you had a pretty good chance at winning it, Michael. I mean, seeing that you won the 600 at this very racetrack last season. Top of the board, John Art. Oh, John Art, top of the board. 
Look at that. All right, Larry Mack, what do what do you, what do you have to say? Uh, what 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 does Larry <laughs> Mack say? I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I was hoping somebody else knew. He's on the high no, side. On, okay, anyway. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait. And we got a car. No, a I know. I, I know what he says. I, I know what he says. The '86 car. I believe that's Zachary Stoltz behind the wheel. Yep. Fire hold Race on, Racing hold on, hold represent. On, hold on, I got this. Of Fire Race Racing that's qualified in the All Star Race. Won the non-charter race at Bristol Dirt. Big opportunity for these non-charter drivers because not only if you win in the charter series, but if you win the non-charter series this season, you get locked into the All-Star Race. So big opportunity for these drivers to be able to showcase what they've got, even though they don't have a, a win in the main event series of Hershey's Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take this moment to say that this, that this race has been brought to you by... <laughs> you talk about the okay, paper I'm towels? now. Yep. Yeah, Braun paper that, towel. That, that, yeah, that's that, that's their new slogan. Zachary Stoltz, I'm really worried if second we have, fastest if we, uh, first lap, looked like. I'm, re I'm really worried if we have uh, Braun Strowman uh, roaming around here. Me too. And Stoltz, whoa! Almost got wow. the top time. Three hundredths of a, three thousandths of a second separated that. Well, here comes Charles Jackson. Climber Tech Motorsports uh, yeah. representative, the Klondike uh, yeah. ice cream bars. Dingling's probably somewhere on there. What did you do for a Klondike? Why did it sound like he just switched into fourth gear? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he knows something we don't know. Charles Jackson getting in via the win he got. Last week at Richmond, the last possible opportunity for a non-charter driver to get into the All-Star Race via a points Why is, event. Is it just me, or have I really not noticed that Charles is in a triple-digit number? What happened to his 54? Uh, Charles Jackson uh, hasn't been in a 54 car since Snickers Cup Series. Charles huh. Jackson signed this season to Climber Tech Motorsports, which runs uh, a couple of cars with triple digit numbers, John Bunnell in the 232 and Charles Jackson here in the 238. Where have I been? I've been too focused on my own team. You've been too focused on retirement. Look at that fast lap, though. Charles Jackson, whoa! 30.215. I guess he does know something we don't know. Maybe that shifting wild. in fourth gear till turn two is something that works. Benjamin Miles Benjamin now on Miles. track. Benjamin not Miles, the Dodge Dart out of NW Racing, getting into this event. And he, and he just switched. And he just switched to fourth gear there, so he must have been. He had to have been watching. Oh or yeah, know I, I guarantee you, anybody that's not gotten on track yet, they are watching everybody on track right now, seeing what they're doing, seeing if they can maybe do something a little better. Benjamin Miles, two wins last season at Springfield, a dirt track, and the restricted play track of Talladega. It's been a very struggling season for Benjamin Miles' team, though. They are down outside the top 30 in the point stands and almost kind of in the same place they were last year in the points. Of course, this was a team that last year had those two wins, but was so far down in the standings, did not get one of the 16 spots in the chase for the championship. They've got to get their season turned around. Maybe a good qualifying his, result, an all-star race win, could help them in the second half of the regular season. His first lap would put him fourth quickest. Let's see what happens when he comes around for his second lap. I believe Miles is... Hales. Ha 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 ha. Really, Michael? Oh, oh wow. one eight five. That is a fast lightning lap. Well, here's Trent Dunham on track, and one thing I've here's... noticed here, look, the later we've, got, we've gotten a few cars on, you know, that have taken time, it seems like the later, um, you know, they're going, the faster the times are, so yeah. I guess having a late draw might be a huge advantage here. John, John Art Trent, with a 31.5, Stoltz with a 30, thir or 35, I should say, Stoltz with a 35, then Jackson with a 32, and Miles with a 30.1. And Trent did not shift in the fourth after the start finish line, so. Have to see if that see comes back to haunt him. Run. Trent I have a Dunham. feeling we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna see some cars. I think get into the 29 second bracket. You think so? I find I find it ironic. Michael makes a Sonic joke or a Sonic reference, and then here comes the Sega car on track. <laughs> 
31, I think nine. Not. That that's last that right is now. That's, not good. that's ninth quickest for Trent Dunham. That is the slowest first lap. first lap laid down today. That is about two tenths slower than McLeod's first lap. Trent winning at South Boston last season, Rio this season, locked himself into the All Star race, but he's really got to pick it up here, and I don't know if he's going to be able to. 31.776. Picks it up, but still the slowest on the board. So, wow. Boy, that's surprising. Well, we saw, that was Caitlin, two. we saw Caitlin Sang on track not too long ago. Here's her teammate out of CJ Racing, Leon Alvarez, who went to victory lane earlier on this season at Atlanta. Oh, she shifted. Atlanta's a mile and a half track, so I mean, would drivers that have won at mile and a half have a little bit better of an advantage of getting around Charlotte, do you think? I would think so. I mean, we've seen it in, you know, we've seen it in NASCAR. I mean, we've seen Jimmy Johnson run well at both, yeah, both Charlotte and Atlanta. I think Bobby Labonte's been the same way in the past. Jeff Gordon, so I mean, it could probably be the same way here. Let's see what the first lap's gonna be. 30.7. 379. That track's about third. That's about just about a tenth off Charles Jackson's first lap. And about That's a pretty good first lap though. We've seen everybody pick up on their second that would be lap, so we'll six, see what that, happens. That would be sixth quickest on her on the first lap. Yeah, right now though, with first laps, that would be tracking third place at the moment. Let's see what he gets this time. Pick it up enough to get maybe second from Jackson. Nope. Thirty-three-five. Gonna slot right there third. in third place for the moment. Here comes Cole Deaver. Now this is an interesting one. Cole Deaver in the All-Star race. He went to Victory Lane this season under rather interesting circumstances. Won at Kansas, but that was after Caitlin Sang got wrecked in the closing stages of that race. Cole Deaver was running second. He got by for the lead. Won the race. Not necessarily the way you want to win a race, but you'll take them any way you can get them. I'm sure uh, Cole what wasn't that? disappointed with that. What about the crazy uh, Pizza Hut X finish at Infineon? Yeah. 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 None of the Pizza Hut X Series winners, though, in the All-Star race, though. Well, at least not locked into the All-Star race, because that's an entirely different series. I still wanted to make series. a point. I still wanted to make a point. 36 on his first lap. It's going to be an interesting race here for the Deaver family, as you meant. I believe you mentioned that that uh, Lord Deaver is also in the All Star race. That Battle is true. Of Brothers here. That's that is tenth quickest for Cole on his first lap. And right now for first laps, that would slot him right between Sanford and Pote to put him eighth quickest at the moment. Let's see what he clocks in. Here. Do on his second lap. Thirty-one. Thirty-one one. one. Yep, right between Sanford and, and Poteet. So Eighth the quickest. first laps are not lying. They're picking up on the second lap, but first lap kind of almost indicating where these drivers are going to be in terms of first lap speed is Daniel Olsen in the 47 went to victory lane at the super speedway of Orlando. A lot of dodge darts in this field. We saw Benjamin Miles on track. We just saw Cole Deaver in a dodge dart. We got a couple more dodge darts that'll be coming out here during the course of this qualifying session. Dodge dart of Tyler Deaver was the fastest in practice. So we know they've got speed and right now Benjamin Miles fastest here in qualifying. Olsen 30.614. That is only about three one hundredths off Benjamin Miles first lap. Put him, um, I believe, six quickest right now. And right now, in terms of first lap speed, that puts him in second place. See if he picks up enough. He's got to gain a little bit more to be able to catch Benjamin Miles. Got to gain about three more tenths this lap. 30.185. That's a tie. Oh, wow. Daniel Olsen with the same lap time as Benjamin Miles. What are the odds of that happening? And now we However, got Henry because Nova. Benjamin Miles, Benjamin Miles got it first, therefore he, he, he got the piece still on pole. Right, and he also is a chartered ride too, and higher in the point standing, so that would get him the pole position. Henry Nova, 
Honda Accord, the only Honda Accord locked into this all-star race. Henry Nuva. Nuva, winning at Atlanta earlier on this season in the non-charter race. His two teammates, Joshua Michaels, Chris Dalton, will try and race their way in to the all-star race via the Hershey shootout tomorrow. 31. First lap, 3107. And that's that ninth, him, that's ninth fastest. Yeah. Ninth fastest on his first run. First lap we've time, mentioned. that would put him seventh place right now. Well, we, we've mentioned what non-charter teams, you know, can do whenever once they uh, have the chance to to be in the main race, they take full advantage of it. And... As you can see right there, Daniel Olson second quickest, and we have a lot more non-charter teams to go as well. Let's see where Nova I'm gonna take slides in. Flag. Does he get 35 any better than nine. seventh nope. place? Nope. Seventh quickest. But to your point, Kyle, I mean, look who we've got right now up inside the top five. We've got two non-charter cars. Daniel Olson second, Charles Jackson there in third. Yeah, here's another non-charter team, Kev Shearer. Now, Kev Shearer doesn't have a win this season, but he was one of seven drivers last season as non-chartered rides to go to Victory Lane in a main event series, winning at Indianapolis. So he's locked into this race. One of, I believe, two Strigley Motorsports entries in the All-Star race this season. And Kev Shearer, really wish I did. take nothing away from him. He hasn't been to Victory Lane yet this season in the non charter series, but he's running top five in the point standings. Yeah, Kev's been doing a great job. I just wish I didn't have to look at the hood of his car right about now. <laughs> not a, especially at the time of this recording, the Reds and the Pirates in the middle of a four-game series. 31-0-2-3, first lap for Kev Shearer. Right now, that has him tracked in the seventh position, right between Zachary Stoltz and Henry Nova in terms of first uh, lap speed. See if we can pick it up here. Maybe move up to sixth place. And 30.583, or 553 five, rather. And he will, he will be seventh place. Well, here's the first time that we've ever had a Lincoln in the All-Star race. Cat Tellier, who went to victory lane last season at the road course of Watkins Glen in the Lincoln out of KEB Racing Enterprises running the special breast cancer awareness scheme here this weekend. Boy, I saw the 70 car. I could have swore that was James Qualls. I'm so used to seeing him in that number. But... Cat Tellier's but no, teammates, Keith Batson and Becca Tellier, we'll see them in the Hershey shootout tomorrow. See what the Lincoln power can do here on the first lap. 31-6-4. That it's is, one of the slower first laps we've seen. That's 13th, uh, that's 14th faster. And that is just a little bit faster than Cole Deaver's first lap, so if the... Probably about track and 11th. Yep, if, if the trend holds true, then she will slide in right between Sanford and Deaver in that 11th position. Let's see what happens here on the second lap. Little better, 31. 31, one. One, and she will slot into 11th place. So it's looking like we can basically determine where these drivers are gonna be based off of their uh, first lap. I think the only exception might have been Daniel Olson. It looked like he was tracking third fastest on his first lap, and then he was able to tie Benjamin Miles for fastest lap in this session. Who we got now? Well, I actually made a mistake. I said that Zachary Stoltz was the only Fire Ice Racing entry in the field. Phil Parker actually is a teammate. So there's actually... Hail Parker! It's actually two Fire Ice Racing Toyota Camrys. Phil Parker winning at the Monster Mile at Dover in the non-charter series. Also, the uh, the new YWC World Raw Champion. I yeah. said that backwards, but I don't care. <laughs> People World are like, Raw what? Champion? Raw World Champion. 31752 for Phil Parker. That is slower That's than McLeod's four, first lap, but a little faster than Trent Dunham's first lap. So he's slotted. He's really looking to become 14th fastest at this point. Not a fast first lap at all. Or 15th, sorry. It's looking to be 15th fastest at this point. Let's see if he picks it up at all here. 31-2. 31-2. Yep. 15. Nope, that's 15th. So 
And right now, I hope. Trent Dunham in the cellar. And JT Bryant. Well, I, th I, th I thought the speeds were going to pick up the later we've gone, you know, we, the later we go in qualifying, but some of these cars are, are not, some of these cars, you know, the, the laps for some of them just, uh, haven't been up surprisingly enough. Yeah, Daniel Olsen was the last one to get a really good lap. Then Henry Nova was slotted in eighth, and since then you got Cat Tellier in eleventh. You got Phil Parker in fifteenth. So yeah, the lap times are going down a bit here, which makes me wonder if maybe the cloud cover is gone for a bit. The track's a little bit slicker. You never know. JT Bryant, the only driver of Young Motorsports that is currently locked into the All-Star race. All three of his teammates, Culpepper, Dylan Young, and McIntyre, will have to try and race their way in tomorrow. 31-9 flat. Wow. That's the slowest. Slowest so far. That first is lap. two one-thousandths slower than Trent Dunham's first lap. He could, for all we know, he could be slotted to take uh, 16th away. Or he could be slower than Trent. He might be. He might be. He's gonna be. It's gonna be close. I'm really surprised by that. I thought the those young motorsports cars usually have a lot of speed in them. But... Thirty-one seven eight. He is slower than Trent Dunham. And right now, he is the slowest car in this session. We talked Here's... about Lincoln making their first start in the All Star race. Well, same can be said for Buick. James Qualls Motorsports representative Matt McIntyre in the Quaker State Buick making the all-star race due to a win he had last season. He was another of those non-chartered drivers who won last season, going to victory lane at Homestead. I Love can the still see clouds around the track, so... Love the paint scheme on that 26, and I throw back to the late 80s, early 90s. At number 26, Quaker State. I don't know if I said it during Bryant's run, but Bryant getting in via his win at Dover. Or not Dover, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it was Dover. 31-002. Not a bad first lap there from Matt uh, Tire. That would place him 11th overall and he on his first lap. And he is just about uh, three-tenths off Leon Alvarez. So that slots him right now in the fifth position if he holds. Just between Alvarez and Arndt. All right, let's see. Coming to the checkered flag, his lap time... 30.50, that puts him... Fifth quickest. Fifth quickest. Well, that's a little bit better than what we've been seeing, so maybe the lap times will start picking up a little bit now. I guess the cloud cover coming back a little bit. Zachary Fitzwater, another Dodge Dart. Out of Fitzwater Australia Racing. Former winner last season gets him into the All-Star Race. He won at Phoenix last year. Still looking for his first win of Season 4, though. former chaser last season as well. You know the Dodge Darts have been pretty good here today. Let's see what Fitzwater's first lap's gonna be. 38-4. 38-4, that slots him just between Twelve. Leon Alvarez and Matt McIntyre. That's a tick quicker than Matt McIntyre's first lap. 12th over 12th, and he would be 12th on his first lap. Let's see where where it gets him. Should be a pretty good lap here for uh, Fitzwater. Should put him just barely in front of McIntyre, I think. Put him into the top five for the moment. Let's see. 30.37. And that does yep, indeed put him in fifth. Focused. Well, here's Cody Smart. Cody Smart, one of two drivers this season that is a two-time winner in the Hershey's Cup Series non-charter series, going to victory lane at both Sonoma and Talladega, two entirely different tracks, so obviously showing how he's able to win at diverse tracks, and at number 12, he scored as the 112 since there are two 12s in the non-charter series, the other 12 being Chris Dollerton. And his first lap of the day is going to be 31.044. That is about two one hundred slower than Zachary Stoltz. Which is 13th fastest 
overall of this first lap. Where he should slot in, according to this, he should slot in somewhere between Kev Shear and Henry Nova, I think. Somewhere around ninth place, crosses the line. 30.532. Wow, he picked it up that time. He was he was slower than Kev Shearer's first lap, and yet he was able to beat Kev Shearer on the second lap. So ninth place running so far for Cody Smart. And we said two drivers had two wins in the non-charter series. Here's the other one: Daniel Gilbert winning the season opener at Daytona, and the last regular or I'm sorry, not the last regular season race. Was it the last regular season <laughs> race? I don't remember. Yeah, it was the last Driver regular season race. He won at Richmond. You know, I'm really surprised that the line a lot of these guys are taking around here. You know, when you come to Charlotte, you think, you you know, for a qualifying lap, you want to be right around the, you know, right on the bottom, right on that white line, but they're taking a little bit higher than that. The, the only fourth, thing I would the wonder number is... Four, you... Number four car right out of my team. Yep. His first lap, 31-4-8. Right now, that puts him right between Charles Sanford and Daniel Gilbert. Actually, he's a little bit faster his first lap than Sanford was. About uh, two one hundredths faster than Sanford. So he, right now, is tracking to slot somewhere between 13th, 14th place, it would look like. And to your point, Kyle, I, I agree with you, although at tracks like this, you run the low line, it might hurt your exit off the corner. You get a little bit straighter line off of turns two and four, which helps your straightaway speed if you run the middle. Gilbert slots in 14th. Here's James Richardson. Richardson, the third entry out of NW Racing. Benjamin Miles already on the pole with a 30.185, so let's see what Richardson can do. It looks really weird to see James Richardson in that, in that 84. So used to seeing him in that 11 car, which he had a lot of success with over the last couple of seasons, but decided to make a change this season. Yep, locked into the all-star race when he put that number 11, as you said, in victory lane at Rockingham, North Carolina last season. Also made the chase for the championship last year. Now a non-chartered entry out of NW Racing. He was one of the final four last season as well. 31.94. Right That's now, that really is, slow. Yeah, not a... That is the slowest one hundred slower than JT Bryant's first lap. So this is strange. You got an NW Racing Dodge Dart fastest on the charts, and right now an NW Racing Dodge Dart tracking slowest. I mean, how does that happen? That's what I want to know. I mean, you look like you look at you, you look at like you know a pair of teammates like the two Twinix cars. They're they're right there together on the speed chart, but then you look at the uh, you know the two teammates here, very different. Leon Alvarez and Caitlin sang pretty far apart there for those two Impalas. As Dallas McIntosh in the 14 out of Sager Motorsports. Victory lane last season at the dirt track of Oswego. It's been a struggling year for this She's at Chevrolet number 14 team though. And I think I can guarantee you he doesn't want to run the same lap time as his teammate Trent Dunham did. I wouldn't imagine so. Interesting paint scheme on that uh, Ford. You can barely see what the sponsor is, but I kind of like how it's covered in Cheez-Its. Cheez-It camo colors on that Chevrolet and a 32 point... Wow, that, that, is, that the... is the slowest. Yikes. That, that is Sega... slow with my dick in there. Sega Motorsports, they, uh... Boy, they it need is... to do some... Sega Motorsports cannot find speed at this track. Well, I mean, I hope good. for their sake that they're kind of, you know, sacrificing a little bit of speed for handling to run well in the race. But still, you don't want to, don't want to have this kind of showing their qualifying. But we'll see what happens. And second Three, lap. Three, one, nine, one. Boy. Yeah, you might be right, Kyle. But I mean, at a track like this, do you really want to start in the back, especially being an all-star race? There's no points on the line. These drivers are going to be making moves they normally wouldn't make in a points pain situation. I'm not exactly sure I'd want to be starting at the rear of the field as second entry out of Michael Norman Motorsports on track. Tim Walsh, the National Guard Chevrolet. 
Tim Walsh, two-time winner last season at Darlington in Kentucky. That's what gets him into this all-star race. I'm with you right there. I mean, I'd rather qualify well, but, you know, a lot of these races, you know, you see you, a lot of these races are, you, you see it's, you know, about comers and goers. You see drivers start up front, and next thing you know, they're running in the back, and drivers starting in the back, next thing you know, they're up front. So, who really knows what we're going to see? 30.67 on his first lap. That's a good first Pretty lap. Good. That's uh, about five one thousand well faster than Charles Jackson's first lap, so he's tracking in the top five. But that puts him, however, uh, I'll put Sam about 12th quickest overall on his first lap. He might be able to beat Charles Jackson here. It's going to be close. 30.22. 30. 223. That puts him fourth on the charts, just behind Charles Jackson. So he was faster than Charles Jackson on his first lap, and then a tick slower on his second lap as. Joseph Srigley, two-time winner last season, won back-to-back -back races last year when he won at Lime Rock and then the following week at Zen Joltas. We talked about McIntosh struggling in the point standings and trying to keep in some of the top point 30 in points to keep his charter. Same for Benjamin Miles. Well, Joseph Srigley coming into this race, 35th out of the 35 chartered drivers in the standings. <laughs> I also want to point out we have six cars remaining after after this one. Srigley 31, almost a 31 flat. And that has him tracking right behind Matt McIntyre. Four one thousand slower than Matt McIntyre's fastest lap and a little bit quicker than John Art. So right now tracking in the seventh position. Or like the eighth rather. There you go, Seth. Get it right. I know. Numbers. They confuse me. And... Numbers. They confuse everybody. 30.514, and that will slot him in just ahead of John Art. Boy, John Art and Joseph really can't avoid each other. Ever since those two swapped numbers back at between uh, seasons two and three, they cannot get away from each other on track or in the running order. Now we have the 0-2 Tampa Bay Race Chevrolet, Jessica Shelton on track. That's One of my other teammates. Sanford was 15th fastest so far. We'll have to see if there's any difference between the Retro Racing Enterprise's car speeds. Wasn't uh, Jessica Shelton the first woman champion of the NSCRA? That is correct. Back in the she won the final, Snickers Cup final season. Yep. Final Snickers Cup champion, yep. Shelton getting into this race, Jessica winning last get. season at Daytona. First, First lap, lap 31-27. Right now... That puts her... That's that a 7, puts her that's 7, 7 actually. Oh, 7-7, seven, seven. I thought uh, it was it a It looks two. like a 2 to me, too, to be honest. But it is that a 7-7-8. That puts seven, her seven, eight. an overall 23rd quickest of that's the 25 drivers. Right now, first lap speed slots her between Phil Parker and Trent Dunham, so she's currently tracking 22nd at the moment. And this time by 661, and that will put her in the second. second position. Wasn't much of a, didn't pick up a whole lot on that second lap. Very surprised by that. And roughly a entire second slower than Charles Sanford's lap, about nine-tenths slower than what Sanford laid down in his qualifying session, as here comes Matt Haas, the Toyota Camry chaser last season, went to victory lane this season at Talladega Super Speedway. Not to be, not to be biased, but that number 78 car in general in NR is usually really fast at, at, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, yeah, you think? But Matt Haas really came out of nowhere last season and had a very, very impressive rookie campaign. One, like you said, met one a couple of times, made the chase, and he's backing it up already this season with a win. And his first lap is a 31-39. Right now, that, that puts him uh, 22nd overall. Yep, right between Henry Nova and Caitlin Sang is where he scored. And you mentioned that seven. Lap. You mentioned that 78 car, you know, being. You know, running well at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Can't, can't forget what Martin Truex Jr. did in the Cup Series last season in the Coca-Cola 600. Absolutely dominating performance there, so that's kind of carried over here to in this series. 
30, 69, or 66? 66. Slots in in 14th place with four drivers remaining. All right, I was secretly hoping that was a 69. <laughs> Here's the defending okay. Daytona 500 winner, Anthony McCrary out of Seth Cole Baker Whoa. Motorsports. No, I'm just kidding. Anthony McCrary, if I remember Anthony. correctly, actually won the Coke 600 back in Season 2. I might be wrong Anthony on that. Anthony McCrary, also the uh, Hanabi You're probably, You are probably the, wrong on that. I probably am. So you better go check your stuff. Okay, I will go check my stuff here. You guys look at the lap times and I will check my stuff. Actually, I don't think it was in season two because um, Anthony didn't make the chase in season two after winning the championship the first season. First lap for Anthony McCurry is a thirty point three nine. That's a great first or three lap. seven three seven. Wow, 30. that 30. is 3. a 7. big time That's lap already for McCurry right now. That is the fastest first seven. lap by two tenths over Benjamin Miles. That's a three seven nine. That puts him. Michael, you said fastest. maybe so would hit the twenty nines. He's on track to maybe do that, or at least, or at least get into the thirty flats. Let's see what can Anthony do as he gets the checkered flag. Wow, twenty nine nine five. The twenty nine seconds. So yeah, you called it, Michael. Nice going there. He maintained Anthony the McCurry. two tenths advantage between himself and Miles from the first lap onto the second lap. And now he is in the pole position as Garrett Sidner on track. Sidner winning earlier on this season at Bristol, but what a lap by McCrory. Yeah, Anthony's probably saying if you guys can beat that one, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bring it on, Sean Gallagher. Yeah. And by the way, I checked my facts. Season 2, Coca-Cola 600 winner, Anthony McCrory. Oh, okay. But how, so then, how did they not get in the chase that season? Too far down in the point stains. Wind didn't count towards a chase spot. Ah, okay. So the 38 car sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Ironically enough, I am drinking 30, Dr. Pepper 30. right now. 30.94. 30. Right now, for Garrett Sidner, that would track him just a little bit slower than Fitzwater's first lap. So he's. Looks like he'll be online that's for a top 10 start. Looks like he's tracking. That's eight. Not 19th, 19th overall. On his first lap, tracking the eighth. Let's see where it puts him as he comes off of turn number four. Teammate Srigley in, or I'm sorry, not Srigley, uh, John Arndt in tenth and four. Thirty point four five. That will track him eighth in eighth crickets. place. So that actually knocks his teammate John Arndt out of the top ten. Oh, look at this guy! He just guy doesn't even deserve to be. Who in this is race. this guy? Look at this guy and this. And his dumb-looking green interstate batteries, Toyota. Hey, that's Seth a nice throwback scheme. What are you talking about? Seth Cole, former winner of the season at Texas Motor Speedway, another mile and a half track. Teammate Matt Haas, currently 16th on the board, so we'll see how his teammate Seth Cole will do here. So, Seth, how does it feel having a clone race? Uh, I kind of feel like. You know what Tyler Breeze said yesterday with the Usos being twins? Identity crisis or identity theft. <laughs> first Stop the first for Seth, the 31 1 0. 31 10. Did, did that happen to you in a game of Town of Salem one time? It did. It did. That's 20th, that didn't end well. 20th, Let's not think about no. that. 20th fastest for Seth Cohen is overall on his first lap. And right now, about two tenths faster than his teammate Matt Haas. Just ahead of Matt Haas, just behind Henry Nova is where he's tracking. So if he doesn't pick it up, it looks like he'll be starting inside the top ten. And yep, he will start just ahead of his teammate. And then there was one. Tyler Deaver, fastest in practice. Can he knock Anthony McCurry off the pedestal? He's got to get faster than a 29.953 to do so. Put it this way, he's got to get about a 30.36 on his first lap to take the pole. Question is, you said he was fastest in practice. Was his, you know, was his fast lap running by himself, or was it a draft? Put it lap? this way, fastest lap in practice was a 28.5, so that was definitely a draft lap for Tyler Deaver. Now they're out there with single so, yeah. car runs, so we'll see what single car speed he's got. Say so, yeah, I'd jump out of my seat if he ran that as, as a single car lap. <laughs> 30.60. 30, 
And that puts him right now a little bit faster than Charles Jackson, actually a little bit faster than Daniel Olsen as well. So he's tracking in third. So it doesn't look like he'll get the pole, but he'll at least start in the top five. He's already beaten his older brother, uh, Cole's lap here. Yes, he has. And coming to the stripe, let's see where he's gonna clock in. 30.108, or 198 rather, and that will put him in fourth position for the All-Star Race. So there you have it, Anthony McCrory with a 29.953 to take the pole for the starting lineup of the All-Star Race. Take a look at third, fourth, fifth, all non-charter drivers, Olsen, Deaver, Jackson, good qualifying spots for them. Absolutely. It's not charter teams, like I mentioned earlier. Boy, they, they, they get a chance to run these main races. They take advantage of it, and a lot of times they're able to put themselves in victory lane, and, you know, this race is no different. Well, McCrory with that 29-second lap time, uh, I think that everybody's going to hope that he doesn't run those lap times in the race, because <laughs> if so, he's going to be gone. Gone down here, 16th through 30th, Henry Nova. Saw that the... Uh, Furniture Row Racing Cars, Seth Cole, Matt Haas, their laps pretty close to each other. Poteet and McLeod pretty close to each other, but not all teams running similar lap times to their teammates. And look at some of these names we're going to have near the rear of the field. Shelton, Dunham, Bryant, Richardson. It's going to be very interesting to see how they try and work their way to the front. Yeah, a lot of experience back there, and... Cars up in front of him, so you see Poteet right there, the points leader, see how he's going to do. And then rounding out the field in the 31st position, the slowest car of the day, Dallas McIntosh. So you got to wonder what kind of strategy they're going to use early on. Are they going to try and fight their way to the front, or are they just going to ride at the back for the first portion of the All-Star Race? We'll have to wait and see. But that's going to do it here. That's your starting lineup for the All-Star Race. But we still got... Slots 32 through 35 to fill in, and that will be filled in with our top two finishers in Heat 1, top two finishers in Heat 2 of tomorrow's Hershey's Shootout. Kyle, you're going to be taking part in that. Anything you learned here, do you think, from this uh, qualifying session that you'll be able to apply in tomorrow's race? Uh, Well, I mean, this is qualifying, and we're talking about a race, so I don't know if... You know, there's a whole lot, you know, I could take from, uh, you know, from, from this qualifying session. But I'm definitely going to talk to my teammates, Charles Sanford and Jessica Shelton, see what they, you know, ask them how the track felt to them and see if I can apply some of that to my car tomorrow. All right. So that's going to do it here today for our qualifying session. Anthony McCurry will be starting on point alongside of Benjamin Miles for this season's Hershey's Cup Series All-Star Race. Michael, any advice you got for any of these drivers, not only in, in tomorrow's race, but also in the All-Star race, uh, being a, uh, a former winner at this track? If you get in front of Anthony McCurry, keep him behind you. <laughs> <laughs> or wreck trying, right? No points yep. on the line. Go for it. Let's go well, for it. The, saw the lap he put down in qualifying. It's going to be hard to get in front of him unless he's coming up to lap you. So. Yeah, right. Well, there's no points on the line, so they can go for broke, make those kind of moves to try and get by McCurry. Just a million bucks on the line there, so go for broke. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in to today's event. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to Compare the Crew today. I want to thank Kyle and Michael for joining me in the booth for this qualifying session. The links to their channels will be in the description below. And up next, as stated, it's going to be the two heat races for the Hershey shootout and then we cap off this weekend before we start getting back into the chase for the chase for the championship with the all-star race in a couple nice days. southern accent there that was a good southern accent wasn't it we're, we're far hey, enough we south are to in do north, it aren't we i was about to say we're in north carolina Admiral, so that's not south enough up. that's not south enough oh okay well well you're in, you're further south and uh, you don't have a, a southern accent so ha anyway uh Anything you guys want to say before we end off the video here? <laughs> of course. Alright, so we will see you guys next time as you've been watching production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best.